Well, greetings! Hello and welcome back! I'm Imperial Jedi's episode number 8. And man, what a fun one on the docket, guys. I have this really cool idea to make this like fun little high-density pocket right in here. Um, we're actually going to try and make ourselves a little mixed zoning, um, kind of like self-sufficient neighborhood. Should be a lot of fun. And I'm hoping it'll give you guys a lot of inspiration too for your own high density. I feel like, you know, there's so many questions about that, right? I don't even know where to begin. I've tried recording like high density episodes in the past and it's just like so much to say and do. So hopefully you guys can get some inspiration through here. I'm just going to kind of like talk through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, yeah, it'll be really fun. I have some cool ideas. And I think towards the end, we're going to do just a little bit of um, uh, transit talk. And I want to possibly put down like one bus line just to kind of get the thought process going. But we do need to expand the city a little bit more before we start really making um, the push for transit. And after today's little mixed uh, zoning unit here, we're probably going to start making our uh, our way over here. So we can get the university built. All right, lots to do. Let's just jump in with it. So what I'm going for is just because we're going to be, you know, working in kind of like a noisier pocket over here. Let's try and put in a mall. I thought that'd be kind of a fun way to start things off here. And, you know, just kind of for the overall thought process, right? Like, if we're going to be creating a whole bunch of high-density residents over here, right? Um, they're going to want shopping. They're going to want jobs and stuff like that, right? So why send them all the way across the city, right? Why, why flood the roads? Why create these bottlenecks? Well, we can just make some jobs available here, make some shopping available here, and then, you know, offer some transit to maybe take them further down, right? Definitely nothing wrong with cars. But we want to make sure we're giving people options. And then hopefully they make the right choice and leave their car behind. That's all we can hope for, right? Like, really, in the perfect world when it comes to your city, especially in city skylines, right? You just want the roads to be full of service vehicles and, um, yeah, you know, cars and trucks making deliveries. Otherwise, the people should be using bikes, they should be walking, they should be using public transit. Transit should be free, for goodness sakes, you know? Especially in 2020, in a modern, like, city lifestyle, or landscape, or whatever you want to call it, right? Like, city transit should be free. Like, the cost benefits there just seem like, you know, why would you not do it? But that's neither here nor there. We're not in government. We can't, unfortunately, make these uh, decisions. Okay, so what I want to do is just create a little bit of a, um, a secondary way in. Because, yeah, we're trying to get the neighborhood to kind of come on over here. We don't want this to be the only way in because it'll super bottleneck. Especially that skinny road, right? And then if we do get some transit, we kind of give them, you know, more options, right? Okay, so I'd like to place down the mall that you actually find in the, um, uh, yeah, uh, level two. Mall of Moderation. And by some sheer perfect happenstance, it actually fits perfectly here. And these guys, they don't mind the noise, right? This is supposed to be a noisy, kind of like highway on-off ramp in air quotes, even though it's only just one-way roads. And then, you know, where would you find them all? Pretty close to a highway anyway, right? Deliveries can come in really quickly. People can access it from all areas. Nice and fun. And then in front of the mall, I was thinking we could put down a um, one of the plazas. And we could use something like uh, the Fountain of Life and Death. That'd be kind of cool over here. Uh, I don't think we have the heart of the city. Did I just see that? Oh, yeah, this one here. Oh, lungs of the city. Sorry, this one's a cool one. A little bit big for what we're doing. This might be more of a downtown park. I do the Statue of Wealth. That one's a fun one. You know, the idea, right? Just big, fun, open plaza. We don't want to have wall-to-wall -wall zoning. They're bigger buildings, which is kind of cool, too. Like, the, the imprint of them is larger. Kind of works well with them all. And then another thing that the highways uh, unfortunately tend to do is they cut the city into portions. So it's going to be our job to try and make the city still feel accessible. So we've got a bridge over here so you can still get from side to side. You know, this could have been a tunnel or a trench to hide a little bit of it. Um, we could offer pedestrian access over top. Let's try that. I'm just going to throw a plaza down here. Actually, you know, because of the height, let's put that over here. Yeah, let's try um let's try a series of pathways through here just for some fun fun decorating so we'll use that walkway there just in case anyone wants to walk up and use it and then at night that'll look nice when it's all uh, all lit up like that and then I think we'll switch over to this path and then do a, um, a bridge. Okay, so I think I want it off that tile. More or less, right? Yeah, okay. Well, let's start from the ground over here and then cut across. Cool. 
Cool. And that one is the Park Life DLC. The difference in the um, pathway there. And actually, just a little fun shout out to that. The wooden pathway, when you make that, or not wooden, sorry, the dirt pathway makes a very, very lovely looking wooden bridge. So if that's more your, your speed, or if you want some variety, that's really cool. So to each their own, but of course, variety, the spice of life. And especially with City Skylines, right? You know, don't always have the exact same piece of infrastructure every single time. It's kind of nice, kind of nice to mix it up. All right, I'm very happy with this. That looks really cool so far. This can be some trees, maybe a couple shops eventually too. Now let's put in, before we get out of hand here, let's put in the small transit turnaround point. And it's something we can kind of freehand. And this is just kind of give our um, our mall shoppers, you know, just kind of a, a quick way home. Pick up, drop off uh, the peoples. Maybe you did a little bit too much shopping. Gotta take the bus home. I'm not gonna walk today. And I'm just slightly curving these. Uh, just initially to get a little bit more spacing in between these intersections. I know these are very close together, and I've been kind of like saying the whole time, don't put intersections close together. We're on a small back road, right? So I'd argue, okay, we can do it, right? Probably shouldn't be too bad. If we need to, obviously we can space this a little bit further out, right? But I feel like, you know, there are certain exceptions to the rule. You know, whenever I make these like big blanket statements, don't do this, don't do this, sometimes there's exceptions. What are those exceptions? Oh boy, that's trial and error. I think you'll find that eventually, right? But I'll kind of stress, I think the best way to learn this game, honestly, is just to make mistakes. So I personally find the imprint of this now to be a little bit big for what we're trying to go for, right? Hence why we're doing a little bit tighter. Yeah, use the run, trial and error. Go out, try stuff. Okay. And so all I'm trying to do is just give uh, buses an option to get off the main road, pick up, drop off people. You know, hypothetically, if a bus is going like off off service, drive, driver switching shifts or something, you know, a bus can kind of chill here. It's not going to happen in City Skylines, right? But just hypothetically. All right, now a fun um, asset to use. If you have the After Dark DLC, you can switch over to your um, uh, taxis, put down our, our dispatchers. And the dispatcher, I mean, they don't really mind. They're just basically going to call out taxis, right? Um, we can put them close to a highway access, um, somewhere noisy, like they literally do not mind one bit. Toss them in here. And that unlocks the taxi stands, which you'll see in a second look fantastic uh, when placed near your little homemade metro stuff. Or, uh, or transit stuff. Probably need power. Yep, we do. Um, we could probably put one building or something in between these guys just to get the power going. Uh, let me toss in a little like corner store in here. And then, I don't know, maybe we can get lucky like a gas station or like a single. I don't normally do the single, like multiple, in you know, like a line of the singles. I don't like doing that. One or two here and there, you might get lucky. Okay, we are indeed dependent on that little little guy there coming in. Well, I got faith, there's some uh, demand, so I'm sure that'll pop in. And then, yeah, back over to here. Um, I'm gonna be popping, I think a couple of these down. Maybe some symmetry. Oh yeah. Actually, it'd be cool if we can get one more on the inside. If you shift these all up by one. Yeah, yeah. And I think I mentioned it in maybe the last episode before, uh, After Dark is probably the DLC I recommend the most when you're ready to start getting DLCs. I think it's part of like a bundle package now even. When the game first came out, um, it, you know, it didn't have even a day-night cycle. It was crazy. And so the After Dark DLC just brought so much stuff relating to like day-night lighting and mechanics and that kind of stuff. So a lot of the workshop items are built off of the After Dark uh, DLC. So if you be able to download like half the workshop, you have to have it. And then these little things come with it, right? And you also get, um, I think like International Airport, I believe it's part of it. You get some really, really, really cool stuff. It's a pretty underrated DLC. It goes on sale frequently because of the age of the game now. Um, yeah, we'll pop this out when we get a chance somewhere why am i in cargo ah oh, so many questions okay worry about this later yeah so let's do a little bit more detailing around here as well and 
And then we're gonna do kind of the same as um, last episode. We're gonna start constructing some high density residential neighborhoods around them. And then we're gonna offer some um, some jobs to, uh, to the people in the form of kind of like a mixed use uh, approach. In case you're wondering, like Imperial, holy smokes, you said high density and here we are doing bus stuff. Well, it's kind of, I mean, I wanna say all hand in hand, right? Oh, let me switch this. I'm trying to mix up the radio stations, by the way. Big, big, big fan of like a lot of them these days. And the new Coast to Coast radio, I really like that one a lot. And kind of what I was mentioning before, I'm just trying to get back into that habit too of just getting these little like five minute uh, detailing projects done. Why don't we just throw in some trees here? And it's just the same old song and dance. Not that it's a bad thing, but we're using some fences, some trees. Right, we're kind of hiding some of the weird imperfections. You know, not, not that it's going to be like an exact science, right? But that kind of stuff you can try if you want to hide a little bit more of the, um, you know, the, the broken pieces. Or the dirt, whatever you want to call this area, right? So I said it before, say it again, whatever level of detail you kind of feel comfortable doing or you feel like the city needs, do it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it and the more comfortable you'll become. And it becomes like second nature. And if you guys remember what this looked like right before we started doing this, right? I don't think it looked bad or anything, but if we look at the comparison right after, right? And what are we doing? We're just kind of filling in some spots here with the trees. A little bit of variety for our trees too. Maybe a little fun color from here. All right, what did that take? Five minutes? You know, we can probably put one more tree in here. Pretty vibrant too, right? At night, you'll see some cool pathways lit up. The, like the night mechanics for lighting are beautiful. I am planning some cinematics once we get a little bit more of the uh, city built, where we can show off some of the areas. We can see day-night cycles properly. Some cool ideas, just based on feedback. So I appreciate that, guys. And in regards to naming districts, um, I think what I'm going to be doing is just kind of going through the Patreon and I'm going to be pulling some names out of there. Um, there's definitely some veteran OG names from the chat. I'll be pulling that too, but we, we do want to introduce some naming into the uh, into the city as well. Okay, back into high density here. I'm so sorry, guys. We just keep on getting so sidetracked. All right, so somewhere for them to shop. we got somewhere now for the buses and whatnot to come around. We're close to a, a high density road which would be kind of like an avenue or bigger, in air quotes. And we're going to start putting down some, um, yeah, larger uh, condos here. And we're going for uh, some variety, because variety, of course, spice of life, we keep saying that. Different sizes, and we'll keep this side open so that we don't get too claustrophobic. You know, when we first started, it was wall to wall. This is not bad. That's why I actually kept this. We got really, really lucky here. We got a really beautiful collection of the smaller buildings. They won't really be as tall or as big. So it's almost, I'd argue, kind of like medium density, where some of these towers on their own are kind of like the high density, high density. Oh, this is coming together great. Okay, so just a few more of these. And we're gonna be using a um, uh, the Park Life DLC to make ourselves a, um, kind of like what looks like a parking lot again. Kind of like a little bit of a, a copycat of this but I think slightly more detailed this time. And we're gonna do that to try and fill in and around here. Okay, throw in a few houses as well. Okay, so for over here, just in terms of detailing, keep it to one tower. Let's just put down our good old-fashioned uh, pathways with some fencing. Some road went in crooked there. Uh-oh. Oh, it's this guy. That's okay. Let's 
this free hand, these ones. There, nice and easy. And I feel like we're kind of getting really close, guys, to the point where I'm going to start using some more of the DLCs. I'm kind of talking a lot about them and not necessarily placing everything. But I'm just trying to keep the, the save files pretty accessible for the moment. I'm not trying to, like, you know, push the DLCs on you or anything like that. Yeah, I do honestly have every single DLC. Um, the company has given me some, you know, early access ahead of time type thing. Just to try stuff out. Otherwise, I have bought quite a few of them myself. I don't have a single DLC where I'm like, oh god, this is terrible. I feel like they're kind of like categorized too, right? Some of them are like way better than others. Like top tier, you know? But yeah, I think that the ones I probably use the most would be like Industries, Park Life, Green Cities. Um, ones I probably use the least. I don't do too many Snowfall maps. I use the Trams a lot though. After Dark, just phenomenal, like I mentioned before. Yeah, I think all of them kind of serve their purpose. So if you're kind of hesitant or anything, I don't think you'll make a bad choice. Taxi cabs, that's so great. So people waiting here can dispatch a cab. Like they'll call for a cab. And then the cabs will just, oh, they're actually, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're just waiting for people. That's even better. Even better. I didn't realize it did that. Oh my. <laughs> you learn something new every day, right? That's what happens if you actually like stop and smell the roses, I guess. Okay, so I was touting the um, the good of a uh, mixed use. Uh, let's start putting in some offices over here too. So the offices are going to act as a sound barrier for our loud commercial friends here. And if we do have some buses going through, they will themselves be kind of loud. That's good. Area here, so we can make a nice big fun open park. We can probably snap down if we wanted to in the corner post right here. The uh, This one's a nice one. Hard to find space for it because it's so large. No way. Look at that, eh? Without interfering with that fence. And then some of the paths, you can snap more roads to them. It's a length based issue a lot of the time. So presuming you have the length, you can sneak some stuff in and attach it around. Not all the time. See what I mean? It's kind of this weird, there's like a no man's land somewhere. And I don't think I can, oh you can, oh you're beautiful. We'll ignore though there's a tree right there. And that I'm going to do, and then we'll change the, um, the fencing right here. And again, you know, imperfections, little holes like that, just be creative. Right? Just opportunities to add more, that's all. Very fresh, I like that a lot. Now let's see how the zoning squares ended up. We lost a few. Not too bad. Okay, so we'll let these guys fill in. And now let's do um, the park uh, detailing here. Um... So yeah, actually we'll do uh, Park District right over here. Void our friend over there. Cool. So yeah, these kind of things, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the uh, Patreon, grab some names for for these. Do that in between episodes. I think I, I did. Oh no, we intentionally left that. Let's just throw a tree or something through here or a pathway. Or both. There we go. And this is Park Life DLC. I'm just going to snap down um, some stuff to the pathways. We'll put down a um, kind of like a gate again over here.
And guys, if I'm kind of, I, I really, again, I don't really know what to say for high density. I'm trying to keep these like slightly tutorial in nature. I do kind of want to just casually build at the same time. So I'm not just kind of like lecturing you guys on building all the time, but I do try to, yeah. I do try to make these kind of videos often where I'm like talking about high density, but I'm almost like, what do you say? So if you have any questions, I highly recommend dropping me a line. That might help me for future videos. Let me switch this too. But I think, yeah, with, with high density, just slow and steady. You know, less is more when it comes to it. Don't necessarily overdo it. Be prepared for traffic. We're going to take a look at our services in a second. High density, you also, you know, in terms of efficiency, right? You want to make sure you're raising these taxes as well. Something we should have done at the start of the episode. These guys will help, you know, this will help pay for the new uh, services we'll be putting in. She has a high and low density uh, tax system. A little bit of mixing up. Okay, so let's snap a couple things to this because we got the uh, the park happening. That's nice. Snap a plaza. Oh no way! We can fit that in here without interfering with that building. Ah, the height's a little bit bizarre, but it's not bad because it, it seems like it's fenced in. I feel like the Sims, though, are going to walk like, oh boy. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Almost. Other side is probably more appropriate. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Can we use this hill to our advantage? Most likely. Yeah, I guess, like, my general just real takeaway, especially when building, is just go nice and slow. You know, pause often catch your breath there's no real rush i mean theoretically you're playing the same city for weeks months some people years you know you might you might just kind of work on it once a month or something but you might have this side project that is just your masterpiece and the more you play the better you get so you learn things along the way you go back and change stuff right you old, load up old save files haven't touched them in a while suddenly it's your new favorite city again Let's get some color in here. Yeah, self-sufficient. That's another thing we're going for here, too. I'm going to keep it, like, w neighborhoods within neighborhoods within neighborhoods. <laughs> Cities is kind of made up of just that, you know. And so it's not wall-to-wall -wall zoning, you know. We're trying to detail, trying to decorate. We're keeping the views open. We got some shopping nearby. We can zone some as well. We got some jobs available. Not too many, because what happens is um, now we're gonna have to start doing, yeah, more, more of a push for um, higher education. Might not have enough educated people to keep these jobs filled. Okay, let's just do a little bit more park stuff in here and then let's drop in a, um, a bus. Actually, where's my skate park? I haven't used that. Let's use that near the mall. Oh, that fit right there. That'd be so cool. Oh, maybe that can be another side. More park vibes over here. Put down the basketball court, too. Yeah. Again, I don't think the park is um, is going to mind the noise one bit. Almost like a sound barrier. I mean, who has not gone to a park on a weekend? You hear kids yelling. And if you close your eyes, you swear it sounds like, what, are they getting murdered or are they having fun, right? Holy smokes. Not to be morbid. Parents definitely know what I'm talking about here, but not bad. I think it kind of ties in nicely with everything, right? We've got use of the pedestrian uh, pathway here too. It gives us some eye candy in the sense that, you know, people are walking by, life is happening within the city. It's not just car focused anymore. we got some cool views. The views themselves aren't blocked by all the buildings, right? Very transformative episode. Like this is really cool. You know, they, they seem like they're too big when you put them in initially, right? But the detailing, all the extras, little hints of symmetry, in the dream world, right, that would line up with the... Oh my god, why did we look at this? Oh no, I have to fix that, don't I, eh? Do I? I have to, I think. Oh my god, no, we have to. Oh boy. Well, we almost made it. 
Oh, and I can't even... Oh, you... Oh, boy. Well, we'll just pretend we never saw that, okay? Oh, great. Now, the... oh, my man. I feel like the whole series has to end now. Imperial, why was the last uh, series only eight episodes? Well, when you get there, you'll know. Ah, oh, jeez. All jokes aside, that's totally not the end of the world, right? I hope someone's laughing, though. But yeah, just little things like this. It really does help to kind of tie it in, right? And then, now, this doesn't seem so oversized. You know, the more, more projects we put in... Uh, the bigger the other interchanges become. It all just kind of feels like it's part of the same just story and flow. And what's really cool is we actually have some people using this now. All right, so let's um, let's get a little bus. We are going to make many bus routes, multiple, um, tons of them going throughout the whole city. We're going to support those bus lines with heavy um, metro, heavy rails, um, trams. But for the moment, let's just start thinking about transit, and we'll give people a little bit of an option. So maybe you can get from here down to slightly into the work zone. And let's just use a uh, quick little turnaround um, here. Maybe actually, you know, our thought process for this, the people that are down here, let's give them a chance to maybe get up to the mall just to kind of keep things uh, fun for them. And then we're going to do a little one-way turnaround on one of these roads. And I'd say bonus points if we go with the flow of traffic. All right, so subject to change, just to kind of get the thought going on some buses here. Ooh, trolley, that's fun, but let's not use those yet. Oh, inner city bus. Oh, this is so nice. You know, maybe we should put this down. Ah, oh, maybe we should, eh? Oh, I want this so badly right there. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> you know, I wasn't planning on doing this, but maybe we can run a bus route into this. All right, how are we doing some of it for money here? Not too expensive. Um, we're pretty close. Let's see if we can take out a loan. And let's just throw down one of each depot. Let's put these uh, near the highway kind of mentality of this, right? So we get some use. Oh, no way. That snaps into there. Cool. Oh, dudes. That's super cool. Um, so I like that. We're keeping that for sure. Power seems to have made it over here. The bio bus depot might be too tall. It's not. No way. That's cool. All right. So dual bus depot. Buses will spawn from here. We can do that visual little fun trick where we change the road. Now we can get two, um, you know, two directions in and out of the uh, the station here. All right, just enough money to do that. So instead of this area here, I'd argue people could probably walk. Let's do a quick little bus that goes from here, that just makes its way up to our little turnaround loop. Okay, how do you want to exit? Oh, dearie me, of course. Um, right, because there's no way. Right, right, right. Okay, you know what? Not, uh, this is what happens when you kind of don't plan, right? Something like this happens. Um, we might be able to pull this off in a different... No, no, no. All right, this is getting out of hand. I'm going to put this here in the corner for the moment, and we will come back with better planning. But let's just, you know, let's put this down now. Oh, you're a one-way... Oh, of course, of course. Oh, my goodness. Again, this is what happens you don't plan. Spur-of-the-moment decision-making is fun when it works, but, oh, boy, not when it's not. All right, third time's a charm. And the irony is we're probably just putting this down temporarily just so I can kind of show you guys what's up with this, you know? Okay, so your bus stops, they don't really have to be every single block. Um, they can get on, get off right here. We're going to take advantage of the fact that, you know, you can walk into that neighborhood from here. Same idea over here. You don't really want your... It's kind of tough when the intersections are kind of close, right? But you don't want your bus stops to be right at the intersection. And you also don't want them to be kind of mid-block. It's kind of a weird, um, weird balance. But just like in real life, you want them to be like one or two blocks apart. So it's just far enough that like you don't really want to walk, but you could. And you don't want the stops too close together, because then the bus will never really get far. It's always stopping. And I guess we're coming in maybe this way. And it's one bus route that's going to fall back on itself. That's why we have the loops. And it's going to end up doing both sides of the streets. And if we did not have a second... Um, um, or if we weren't doing the loops like this, 
what we would instead do is uh, put a stock right here even. I'll just show you really quick. If we did not have one bus doing that, we would have uh, two lines doing a um, one of each side. Let's do another one that serves the community through here, just to kind of give you um, a thought on that. So stop here, stop here. Oh, talking over the talk. Just try not to do that too often. We'll hit up Main, Main Street near quotes here. Okay, so we have one uh, loop, right? It's complete. The only thing, though, with this is if you live here and you want to go to the mall, you've got to go the entire length of this bus line. Right, you can see how that would be a problem. So we need another bus line in this scenario to the opposite side of the street. So these two are a team. They're essentially the same line in air quotes, right? But they're just doing, you know, the opposite direction. So this is pretty pivotal. Otherwise, your transit network won't really be efficient. And if you do want to change the look of your um, buses or the types, you can click on the line right here. And if you've got um, uh, the different DLCs, you can swap around. So if you want the biofuel bus, you got the bus. I think it will do random if you want to, which is kind of cool. And then um, you know you can modify the vehicle numbers right by changing the um, the the budget. So if you want more than four, less than four, slide this up and down. It shows the spacing and the people waiting at your stops. And then what's fun too is you can change your colors. Maybe we want like a red fleet. There we go. Easy to get uniform color that way too, when it's just the top right hand side, right? And that'll of course change the, um, the color of the buses. Um, why I didn't do that here, who knows? These are great questions, did I not press? Nope. Oh, it's another bus line, oh duh. There we go, cool. Now you can't miss a bus. So there's our bus fleet. There's our new high density neighborhood popping in. And that's just a, you know, a little casual start to this. There's just so much to say and do, right? But principally what we're trying to do is just keep the views open, give people backyards, plazas. We're trying to make mixed use zoning a possibility. So you don't have to leave this area necessarily to now do your work, your shop, or your play. We've got tons of stuff here, right? And the more, the more things we add, the more unique it feels the more, you know, each neighborhood will have its own kind of fun twist to it, right? These buses will space themselves out, so don't worry. And if you've not seen this kind of stuff yet, um, you get a little cute curb cutaway. But um, you want to make sure, see how this one's still kind of blocking? You want to have these kind of just far enough in that traffic doesn't really get too, too caught up in this. It shouldn't be that much of an issue once the buses sort themselves out spacing-wise, but kind of cool. So there we go. So now people in this part of the neighborhood have access to the um, uh, to the mall, and they can swap buses to get a little bit further downtown. So there you go, a little bit of transit, a little bit of high density building. Um, yeah, it's just all coming together. In next episode, we're gonna kind of do just a little bit more expansion, nice and late, nice and casual, and uh, we're gonna try and just get the population up a little bit more, just so we have more people to kind of test out our our metro and our buses, that kind of stuff. But transit is coming. And again, you can see what happens when you don't plan. You make these panic decisions, money gets wasted, efficiency. You know, we're not on a budget or anything here, really, right? The clock budget, we've unlocked some good stuff, but overall, you know, time is money. So we wanna be making smart decisions, especially early on. Okay, well, that's it for me. I will leave you guys with this. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you enjoy. I really think we're, going, we're growing in the right place here. I think our city is, is large and in charge and growing nicely. Okay, well, I'll see you guys again. Um, really looking forward to the comments. Thank you very much again just for everything you guys are doing. You're all wonderful. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. See you there. Happy building. Adios. Take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm.